thank you for the kind introduction. Can everyone hear me? Uh, my son tells me I don't need a microphone, but um, for, for all of you who is not in trouble, I um, hope that you can hear me. Um, so thank you, and thank you to MPN Voice. And I want to say at the outset, uh, MPN Voice is a huge support to us in Ireland um, in terms of providing information, um, in providing support, and having their information days. And so what I'm going to present uh, was a survey conducted at the information day back a couple of years ago now. Um, this survey looked at both the patient and the caregiver experience of living with an MPN and the impact on the caregivers. Um, today I'm just going to focus on the caregiving uh, activity. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm presenting this on behalf of a working group. So in Ireland, we're a little bit different to here in the UK. We don't have disease-specific uh, nurses. We all uh, work in um, all both malignant and um, uh, benign haematology. So MPN is one cohort of the patients that we would look after, but not the whole um, cohort. Um, so for that reason, some of the findings um, may be a little bit different to what may be experienced by caregivers here in the UK. Um, I want to say at the outset also that the survey was supported by Novartis. They had absolutely no influence on the questionnaire, but they did provide us with financial support to complete our meetings and to design the survey and to uh, publish the survey. Um, and indeed, uh, from a a data analysis perspective, I also want to acknowledge that we had a nurse lecturer from Galway, Maura Dowling, um, who's well known to us in Ireland as nurse um, clinicians and, and, and nurse uh, uh, specialists. So we're all aware that MPN is a clonal group of disorders, um, and this is, uh, leads to either an overactivity in the bone marrow of the white cells, red cells, and platelets. And we subtype um, based on um, the findings, both from the bloods and the bone marrow. It's a rare condition, so in Ireland we would expect six um, per 100,000 patients a year. Um, so this equates to about 150 patients um, a year, so a small number of patients. We do know that there was landmark studies uh, conducted both by Ruben Messi in the US and Professor Claire Harrison here in the UK, um, which looked at the patient perspective um, of over 700 patients and physicians and the impact of a, an MPN diagnosis. So we used this as our um, sort of starting point um, when we were designing our survey. So we know from the patients that there is a, thankfully, a huge benefit to new treatments um, and disease control is much better. Uh, but it does still have a significant impact in terms of quality of life um, and uh, for some patients, unfortunately, a shorter life. Um, so we wanted to look at the carer's perspective as this hadn't been included. Um, so there is a lot of research in other areas where we know that the impact of a diagnosis of a hematological disease has an impact on not just the patient, but a ripple effect on uh, caregivers and loved ones. Uh, so that was really the, the reason we looked at this. In Ireland, we don't have MPN Voice as an entity, the same uh, as you do have in the UK. They provide great support to our population. Um, so we also don't have a database um, of the number of patients uh, living with an MPN. So for this reason, um, there's limited data, so we needed to look at how we could gather this information successfully. So as I've mentioned, a group of us who have an interest in MPN and who have a cohort of patients with MPN got together and we designed a questionnaire that was anonymized um, and the data was pooled to produce our findings. And the questionnaire was uh, literally handed out at the MPN um, patient day in Cork in 2019. And we presented our aims and objectives. We obviously addressed confidentiality and informed consent. And as I mentioned, we handed out the questionnaire to be completed on the day. Um, and then myself and my colleague, Ger, who was present on the day, collected the information and we um, started the data analysis along with Dr. Dowling. So caregiver, we needed to define what we meant by caregiver. So a caregiver refers to the person who assists or supports a patient uh, with any disease, and in this uh, setting, the MPN. Um, and they can be um, helping them in any way in terms of it may be 
bringing them to appointments or it may be providing some, uh, financial support or it could be uh, personal care, for example. As I've mentioned, there's limited data from an MPN perspective, but we do know that um, from other diseases, it can have an intense and complex effect on the caregiver. So it is a small survey. There was over um, 120 attendees at that meeting and 55 patients participated in the patient survey. Uh, but there was 44 uh, caregivers uh, who completed the survey for us. And as you can see on this slide, um, this had a, a quite a wide age range, so from 1919 up to 77. Um, we had a balance in terms of uh, gender, so males and females were balanced, but we had a difference in the length of care patient, uh, caregivers were providing the care. So 56% were, were caring for their loved one or their spouse um, for, that's the same people by the way, the loved one and the spouse, um, <laughs> for about 56% of patients uh, or caregivers, but there was 36% who had been caring for more than four years. So, of course, we wanted to know um, who, these, who, who, who they identified they were caring for. So, as we expected, the majority were caring for their spouse or partner. But there was 27% caring for their parents. And it was also important to highlight this. Um, so, of 44, there was five um, who were pr providing care for their son or daughter. Um, and as we know, um, and, and quite eloquently heard from Alice earlier, uh, they do have different needs as well. So then we wanted to know what was the type of care or what help they were providing. Um, so what we found in this survey compared to some other surveys was 80% of the patients were having support from um, their loved ones. And um, so... 68%, so the majority were providing care for less than an hour, uh, but there was a small number, um, but a very significant number of patients who, or caregivers rather, who were providing care um, to um, their caregiver for more than four hours. Um, so you can see this is a type of support I've mentioned already, companionship, uh, transportation, um, and emotional support obviously being very important. Um, what's important to highlight also is as I mentioned, the subgroups um, in terms of MPN, we didn't distinguish um, and we didn't actually pull out the data because we didn't ask the question, what was uh, the diagnosis of their loved one? Um, but it is important to note that uh, we know from other studies that uh, myelofibrosis, for example, uh, patients uh, may have a bigger uh, burden um, of disease and a bigger burden in terms of symptoms and may require more care. Um, so we then wanted to know how was it impacting them and um, so what was their emotions and feelings and we asked this at two points. We wanted to know what it was like at diagnosis and then what it was like at the time of survey completion. So as you can see, the majority of these people were at least two years diagnosed um, with uh, an MPN. So they were care the caregivers were over two years um, supporting so naturally, a diagnosis, what we'd expect, um, is anxious. And obviously, there was some anger. Um, but over time, the main concern was um, you know, being worried about disease, the treatments, were the treatments going to work, etc. But I'm glad to say at, fifth, at the time of survey completion, over 50% were very hopeful uh, for the future of their loved ones. Um, so how did this impact on their caregiving emotional well-being? Um, so 36%, so a third um, said it had a significant impact on their uh, well-being. And what was really interesting, and this is why I mentioned at the start, sort of um, uh, to give rationale to why some patients and some caregivers felt that they weren't supported at the time of diagnosis. So almost 50% of of carers in this survey felt that they weren't included in their uh, loved one's diagnosis and didn't get the information. And this is where we really need to work on um, in the future. Um, and so this also highlights the importance of recognizing that the impact of an MPN diagnosis far extends um, the patient as well. Um, not surprising, um, 
for us um, it was the fact that 100% of caregivers had not heard of MPN. Um, not surprising, I say, but certainly something that needs to change. So public awareness around these conditions is really, really important. And because it is a small group and because we're a small island, working much more closely with MPN Voice to uh, improve this in the future is really one thing that we uh, need to address. Um, but thankfully, at the end of the survey completion, uh, all of the caregivers felt that they were now well informed. Um, why is this important? Well, it's really important because you can see here, we know that by, by providing educational support, um, we make a huge impact on ha the burden um, and the, the caregiver's emotional well-being. So this is why this needs to be addressed. Uh, we also know that if we um, can improve the symptoms of the patient, then we can reduce the burden on the caregiver. And perhaps burden isn't the right word to use, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, so this is really, really important. If we have a big impact in terms of symptom burden for the patient, it will then obviously have an impact on um, how the caregiver is affected. Uh, so some of the, so obviously we wanted to know from them what uh, we can do to help and so to, to identify where areas of improvement could come from. Um, so the majority, as um, I've mentioned, hadn't had any um, touch point with other caregivers. Um, so 82%. So we need to change this. Um, and they also hadn't had the opportunity because we don't have support groups like you do in, in the UK um, around MPN. We do for other conditions. Um, so uh, one of our objectives is to address this. And over 90% over felt that more public awareness um, of these um, diseases was important. So Blood Cancer Awareness Month and blood uh, disorders um, need to be highlighted more, uh, not just at that time throughout the year, but that, as uh, we've seen from Alice earlier, that's an opportunity to uh, address this. Um, and what we also found from the survey was that the needs of the caregiver were highest at the time of diagnosis. So again, um, that's sort of part of our recommendations. So to summarise at this point, uh, this was the first Irish survey that looked at the impact on caregivers. Um, it looked at the impact and we saw that it was quite high in terms of their emotional well-being. Um, it also, as I've mentioned, um, highlighted patients in this group, so that looking at the patient um, side, there was 80% of patients requiring caregiving. Um, so we need to look at that. So what did it highlight for us? Well, it highlighted that the support around uh, diagnosis is important. We really need to understand better the impact of a diagnosis on caregivers and how we can include them and support them, not just at diagnosis, but throughout the uh, patient journey. And it also highlighted the need for uh, better communication. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, um, which is really important, um, we don't have the data from MPNs, but we do have it from other diseases. Um, and we know that the well-being of a carer can be gravely affected um, by a patient's uh, diagnosis. And so we need to ensure that we support uh, the caregiver and ensure that they have um, support around the the, some of these activities, so leave from work, for example, finances, missed activities, um, and the opportunity to meet others, as you all here uh, will acknowledge, is really crucial. Um, to take that, um, so I was chatting to a lady in the toilet, or just, um, and take that sort of piece of being alone away. Um, so our recommendations then is to create a wider network of support, and we hope to do that um, with MPN Voice. Um, we need to look at how we reduce the symptom burden for the patient, and therefore that will have a positive impact on the, bur uh, the burden on carers. Um, so we are talking about focused educational uh, programs, um, and we're also talking about uh, further research. Now this was conducted just prior to uh, COVID-19, so we've been using that as an excuse for some time. Uh, we can no longer use that, um, and we've reconvened as a working group, and we now have a bigger working group, and we're going to work on how we can address this. Um, obviously, it's important to spread the word about these um, findings, and so we did publish in the British Journal of Nursing um, both the patient and caregiver experience. A uh, thing that's evolving, I mean, I, I always say I worked in the UK for 10 years. We're a little bit behind um, in terms of some of the activities and we're ahead in some other things that we do. Um, but we are now, the, 
thankfully, I was the first haematology AMP in Ireland, and I was alone for many years. Um, but thankfully, now there's a great network of us. Um, and so we're looking at how we can improve the patient pathway, and this will also have a knock-on effect on carers. So we now have oral anti-cancer medication clinics. We have an oral model of care. And we're also aiming to move our patient group um, from the hospital to the community. So I'm glad to say that I set up my first clinic in September, and this has been very well received um, from both patients and caregivers. Limitations in terms of the survey, well, it was descriptive in nature, um, so pooled analysis is a little bit challenging. It was a small number, um, but of course you have to start small and, and build upwards. The recruitment methods, you could say, was a little bit biased because it was one um, group down the south of Ireland, um, and perhaps it may not reflect the whole of Ireland. Um, and then the geographic, or the subtype, we didn't classify, and this may have affected our results. So I'd like to end by acknowledging um, the caregivers who participated um, in the survey, uh, MPN Voice, because they allowed us to, pro to provide this at their information day, but they also endorsed the um, survey prior to it um, being um, published and in terms of the working group. And finally, just to acknowledge uh, all of you for listening. Thank you.